welcome everybody to another round of World of Tanks subscriber replays. My name, as always, is Maxwell, and today's first video is from the user Nuke99. That's Nuke99, and he's driving the Centurion Mark I on a standard battle on Himmelsdorf. Centurion Mark I being the tier 8 medium tank for the British. Sorry, I don't know why I stumbled over that sentence so much, but uh, there we have it. So, straight away, Nuke99 going to be heading up the... Uh, Far right hand flank, going to be taking to the hill with his allies. Going to try and secure a position up here. Because if you can get up here quick enough and take the hill, it does go a long way to helping your team to secure the victory. It's not the be all and end all. Like if you don't take the hill, you don't win. That's not always the case. Um, but it really does help. I mean, it is an entire flank in and of itself. So if you don't take it, uh, then you've obviously lost ground. Has a shot at that T69. Doesn't quite. Not quite able to t pick out the tiny millimetre of turret that was uh, visible there. We're going to see if he can get somebody else here. There's an AMX AC. He gets a good shot on him. Doesn't really have very much support here. He's got that FV in the background there, the artillery. He gets a nice shot on that T69. He's got an IS pushing further up. Uh, a T150. Ah, oh, there we go. So his allies start to arrive now. They're just a little bit late to the party. And there's a Knevin there. But that IS just went a little bit too deep, a little bit too quick, and then the T-150 gets taken out in short order as well. So a problem here is people just not checking if it's safe to go before just going, as we saw there with the IS getting eliminated and then the T-150 pretty quickly afterwards. Getting foiled a little bit by his gun depression here. So just taking cover behind this Knevin and then trying to pump. So there we go, gets the gun depression as he gets himself actually a little bit further down the hill rather than going up higher. Able to consistently put damage on this KV-1S and then he's able to take him out and that is his first kill of the match. So now he's got this Nashorn. Oh, that was a very, very nice hit and then uh, Nuke able to pick up the kill on him. Now he's got to face off against this Type 59. Not really sure where the Knevin's looking. Maybe somebody's trying to sneak around the castle there. Nuke going to pop himself up just to have a little bit of a look. Doesn't look like there's anybody... Oh, yes, there's a 5100 and that AMX now sneaking around. Should be able to get some damage on this AMX as he comes around. Indeed, he can and picks up kill number three. And they've got to try and fend off this Type 59 from the front, the T69. But again, got to be careful of the T69 as he does have that dangerous auto loader. Did get his ammo rack damage there, but just uses a repair kit to finish that off. Realises that things have gone a little bit sour now. As the Knevin gets taken out, and that was the guy who was going to do the uh, damage taking and bouncing the shots, considering he is that heavy tank. So, deciding now that discretion is definitely the better part of Valor and just makes his way out of there. The FV not quite quick enough. Nuke was just tempted to head back there after the 5100 had his shot at the artillery, but realising that the 5100 is an auto loader. So not really going to be able to get anything on him. Has a sh quick shot at the Type 59. The Type 59 has a shot back. Neither of them really hitting each other. And uh, Nuke just trying to get himself into cover. Quickly having a look in front of him there. Just to see where he's going to drive to. Make sure he's not going to hit the obstacles. Gets a very nice hit on that Type 59 there. But it looks like the 59 is getting damaged back in return. So he's got to take cover behind the rubble. Gets another good shot at that Type 59. And this looks like it's going to become a base race here. As the 5100 looks like he's parked up here just to try and hold them off. But it looks like the allies are pushing in on the enemy base. And the enemy is pushing in on their base. But the enemy obviously has a lot more tanks in the cap circle. A lot quicker than the allies do. So it's going to be up to Nuke and that M41 artillery to come back here and do something about it. Only got about 30 odd seconds on the clock. So we're going to have to do this one carefully. Problem is, with the amount of tanks that the enemy has here, this is going to be very, very dangerous. Gets a good hit on the types on the T69 there. Resets the his clock. And now he's got to find this Type 59, as he's the other guy who is capturing the base. But uh, Nuke 99 not quite wanting to suicide just yet. And there we go. Gets a good reset on that Type 59. Gets ammo racked again, and there's going to be nothing he can do about that. But if he's not careful with the amount of base cappers in the base and the allied base, this one could end up being a draw unless he can get one more hit, which he does. Secures victory for his team there. Absolutely amazing piece of work there. Just sucking it up, suiciding in there to get the final bit of damage 
onto the enemy tanks so that the allies could secure the base capture and secure the victory there so absolutely awesome replay from nuke 99 thank you very much for sending that one in and stick around because as always the score screens and another game are coming right up And our second replay of the days from the user Holy Moscow. That's Holy Moscow when he's driving the T20 on an encounter battle on the steps. T20 being the tier 7 medium tank for the Americans. So far, this has probably got to be my favourite medium tank out of all of them. Uh, opinion on that's probably going to change when I finally unlock the T54, which I think I'm probably a few weeks away from still. But uh, up until this point, T20 definitely... Definitely the best all-rounder medium tank that I've ever played on. Just considering it's good mixture of speed, it's good mixture of agility, it's got mm, okay armour, but obviously being a medium tank it can't really rely on the armour. It's got decent hit point pool and it gets a decent cannon as well. So out of this replay, it being an encounter battle, the team looks like they've split up pretty much 50-50, sending a good contingent over on this left-hand flank, and then there's a good amount of them still on that right-hand flank. Bound to T25 AT there, not quite able to get any damage on him, shot just falling a little bit short there. And he's going to have to try and contend with this KV-1S, although if he can lure this KV-1S around the corner, a couple of his allies should hopefully have shots on him and be able to get some damage through. But it looks like he's focusing on somebody in the distance there, uh, Holy just poking himself out again just to have a look. Does spot out this A20 here. Has a shot and takes him out. And that just leaves this KV-1S Hellcat and T25AT here. I'm not really sure where the rest of the enemy team is because they're certainly not on the right-hand flank. But as you can see by the Allies camping all the way along that H and G line, uh, that's probably what the enemy team is doing, camping around that spawn area. Gets a good shot through that KV-1S while he's looking in the other direction. Miss Hellcat only with 100 hit points left. His platoon mate decides to YOLO in here. So he's going to have to come and defend him. Very, very unlucky there not to hit the uh, Hellcat. But it looks like his ally there, the T-43, able to take him out. KV-1S not quite reload. There we go, reloaded. But bounced his shot. Gets a good shot through the rear of the KV-1S. And that just leaves the T-43 to try and duel with him. But the troll armour of the KV-1S just kicks in there. So Holy Moscow has to use a shot to take him out and pick up kill number two. So that looks like the left-hand flank pretty much entirely dealt with. The guys who were camping on G and H realised that they can't shoot at anybody. So finally, finally decided to move up there. Although they've still got that Tiger 1 camping around about there. Spots a T14 in the back there. But looks like he's totally AFK. So going to flank around behind this KV-1S while he is focusing on someone else. Sets him on fire. And that is kill number three. Now it's going to be a case of just coming around the corner here and taking out this T14. Not really sure whether he's going to be a bot or whether he's just AFK. Because sometimes these bots, when you shoot them or bump into them, uh, they do wake up. But it looks like this guy is literally just AFK. So they're just going to sit in front of him and get some free damage. Still hasn't taken any hits yet, which is good. Well, he's bounced some shots, but he hasn't taken any damage. His ally there in the T-43 taking a considerable amount of damage, down just under half hit points. Uh, now they're going to have to try and find exactly where the enemy tanks are, because they seem to be overwhelming them on the right-hand flank and the left-hand flank together at the moment here. But uh, hopefully the enemy team is just camping around this area here, and they should be able to put some shots into the rear of them. Obviously, with that T-14 being AFK, the enemy team does know that these tanks are coming, because although he's AFK, he does still do spotting for them. Gets a good bead on this KV-1 in the distance here. Looks like he's not paying any attention to what's happening in this flank. Just missing that shot there. Flying over the top. He's still backing off and he gets tracked here finally. So hopefully Holy Moscow can put some damage through his side armour. Indeed he can. 
Uh, and with him being tracked, just going to keep his reticule in exactly the same place. Going to hope that he can take him out here. And indeed he can. Picks up kill number four. A nice blind one on that KV1 in the distance there. And that was a pretty long range shot as well. So it looks like the majority of the enemy's heavy tanks were actually camping around the spawn area. So this is going to prove good for the Allies, to be honest. The two of them decided to spin around here and just probably go over the train tracks and maybe try and flank them as the German tanks and that tank destroyer come in to try and take their attention. Holy Moscow and his ally in the T-43 going to head down the other side of the train tracks and try and get some flanking action on the go. Looks like the uh, enemy team has an E-25 camping right in A-8. And it looks like he's made short work of a lot of people. He hasn't picked up many kills, but he's probably done a crap ton of damage there. And just kind of whittled the allied team down here. Does find that Tiger 1 and that IS-2 here. And, uh, looks like they're both focused on this SU-100. So should be able to get some free damage through the rear. We've got to be careful though. This IS-2 is looking in his direction. So he's only able to put one shot through the rear of the Tiger 1. That IS-2's had his shot now, firing at that SU-100. So just going to get some damage onto him. Oh, very unlucky just to get a zero damage critical through the tracks. It's always painful when that happens. Just keeping an eye on that E-25, making sure that he's not coming in to, uh, <laughs> to surprise them from the side. But it looks like the enemy team actually been a bit pretty smart here. Moving across to the other side of the hill... So the two medium tanks here aren't able to get any damage on them. Looks like they were going after the SU-100, but the SU-100 has fallen back. But no, that IS-2 manages to get a, a really nice ammo rack on him and end up taking him out. The, en the Allied team's actually falling pretty quick at the moment. Most of them on low hit points. There's 30 or 1, only got 7 hit points left. And Holy Moscow able to get a good bit of damage through the rear of this Tiger-1 here. And he's going to be able to consistently... Put damage onto him while he's focusing on this 30 or one Got to help his ally here now because this IS-2 is deciding just that he's had enough of this and he's going for him. Going to try and take him out now. Not quite able to find a shot on him just yet. Misses that one. Rushed it a little bit. And this T-43 is just dropping back and dropping back in an attempt to get away from this IS-2. But to be honest, he's got nowhere else to run. Holy Moscow coming in here and blocking the IS-2 shot so he can't get anything on the T-43. And uh, T-43 just got a carousel around him and the two of them are able to pick him off, take him out. And that's kill number five for Holy Moscow there. Doing a great job of just blocking the shots of the IS-2 so that he couldn't take his ally. Very nice shot on the move against that Tiger-1. He saw his ally in the T-43 only had 29 hit points left. And that is pretty much going to be GG there. All the enemy team has is this E25 and I'm pretty sure last time we saw him he only had about 60 hit points so they're just basically going to go on the hunt now because there's still seven and a half minutes on the clock and there's only this E25 if they spread out well enough there's only so many places he can hide Holy Moscow heading all the way down this flank here and his ally heading there we go finds the E25 as he takes out the T43 it looks like he's camping really really hard there uh, I don't think he's actually making an attempt to win the game. I think he's probably just trying to hide and not get destroyed. <laughs> but uh, making a run for it now because he knows he's been spotted. He doesn't want to get hemmed in here. Holy Moscow is going to try and close him down. Misses a couple of shots there, although one was blind. E25 starts firing, but Holy Moscow's got 100% of his hit points. And there's going to be nothing this E25 can do. He comes in, has one good shot, takes him out. Picks up kill number six, top gun medal, nearly 3,000 points of damage, and being an absolute demon with his platoon mate on the left hand flank there. So, absolutely awesome replay there from Holy Moscow. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget, guys, if you've got yourself a good replay, then please send that into replay at screenreality.com. Link for that is in the description. Don't forget to leave me a like or favourite if you enjoyed this video. Stick a comment in the comment section below letting me know exactly what you thought of the two replays we've seen today. And if you're not already, then please consider hitting that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. I've been Maxwell, this has been World of Tanks, and I will catch you guys next time.